Hello everybody and welcome to Wedding Videography for Beginners. I am your host Phil Beabout and today I wanted to chat about the new firmware update for the Sony FX3 firmware version 3.0 which actually released looks like last night. I want to do a quick video on this kind of go into details about what the changes are our new settings that kind of stuff uh, if you're new to the channel we are wedding videographers in new england and we just love talking about all things wedding related so let's jump right into some of the links uh, first the link to the firmware update is going to be below in the description and second a link to our presets which is set to the new firmware 3.0 will also be down in the links you can grab that for free so that's it has all of our modes and that kind of stuff and i'll briefly go through that here at the end End. But before that, let's talk about the new firmware and the new features, because I'm, I'm actually pretty excited. This is a pretty big, pretty big update. Before you download, or before you start to install, I should say, is if you are on version 2.02 or earlier, you're going to have to update to 2.05, and then you can update to firmware 3.0. Now, luckily, the 2.05 uh, installer is in the package that you download from Sony. So both the 2.05 and the 3.0 firmware is sitting in there. So that's what we had to do with our cameras. Speaking of our cameras, we are recording right now in DCI 4K24. Uh, we're putting it to the test right now to do this video. So this FX3 is currently recording in that. Both of our FX3s were successfully updated this morning and we did purchase both of our FX3s at different times. So both of them seem to work just fine. Let's talk about the actual updates in the firmware. So some of the bigger updates, focus breathing. Focus breathing has finally come to the Sony FX3. Uh, I will say, you know, I'll kind of go on a rant here at the end. However, it's nice to have the focus breathing compensation finally get to these. If I was like an A1 owner, I'd be, I'd be getting pretty mad at this point. I can lie. We have focus breathing compensation. Now we actually added the focus breathing comp compensation to our function menu. So you can just toggle it off and on inside of there. Uh, so when you are using a Sony lens, you can, use that. If you are not using a Sony lens, obviously focus breathing isn't applicable. So with, for the camera that we're using to record right now, that's a Sigma uh, 24 to 70. And it's, you know, we obviously don't need that. But for our 16 to 35, we'll be using focus breathing compensation now. So that's a nice change. Next is DCI 4K. So I personally prefer to film in that. Like I said, we're, we're filming in it right now. It is a slightly larger size. Like physically, it's a slightly larger size than just traditional 4K, which also means that it is a slightly larger file size. It's not horribly larger than XAVCS uh, 4K, to be honest with you. I think it reduced our cards by five minutes. So instead of 220 two minutes or whatever, two hours and 22 minutes, we had uh, two hours and 17 minutes. With that being said, the cards that we are using are the pro grade uh, V90s. So we're, I'm filming on that right now. And then that's also what's in here. Those are just our cards of choice. I think they were the cheapest when we bought them, but I am a big fan of DCI 4k. I think that it gives you wiggle room and post for you to kind of reframe, adjust your shots. That is a welcome change. One of the things that did come with the DCI 4K is filming in 24p, so a true 24p, which is a very welcome change to the cinema line of the Sony cameras to be able to shoot in 24. You can also adjust the shutter speed to 48, so it matches both of those, but you have to be in DCI 4K in order to use 24 PS. Just be aware of that. Inside of the S and Q mode, you can now film at 48 frames. Uh, I did try to go in and test that, but you have to have CFast cards to do that. Like I said, we're on ProGrade V90s, so it told us that our card was not fast enough. I personally don't use S and Q mode. I just shoot at 59.98 and then just reduce it in post when I need to. That is an option that is available now, which is pretty cool, but just be advised you are going to need a fast CFast, I think it's a type A card in order to do that. They've also added anamorphic D-squeeze to the equation now. Uh, we don't have any anamorphic lenses. 
but you can de-squeeze now, I think up to two times in the internal uh, screen. So you can look at that instead of needing to push it out to an external monitor in order to de-squeeze it through the monitor. So that's a cool feature. You know, for us personally, when we're doing weddings, one thing that I do that I've been kind of thinking about is buying the Sir Suri, like a 35 millimeter anamorphic and using that for the reception dancing at the end of the night. I think that'd be a, a cool Michael Bay type look to have the, uh, the flat light reflections and that kind of stuff. So I thought that would be neat to do for the receptions, but we just, I haven't done that yet. So we don't have anamorphic lens, but they do have anamorphic D-squeeze. You just gotta trust me on that one. One cool feature that they did add that I thought was actually pretty interesting was the ability to change the camera name, the real number and the camera position now in the settings. So you can get really granular into what camera you're using. I thought that was, you know, if you're on a set with like multiple different cameras and different positions and that kind of stuff, I think that's going to be really useful for people in order to organize their footage and that kind of stuff. So that's, I think that's actually pretty cool that they did that. And lastly, for the big ticket items, the ability to update your software, I think, and the firmware via a cell phone, um, I guess that's a cool feature. I personally don't know how I feel about that. I don't know what situation you would be in if you were in the field and you had to do an immediate update to your FX3. So you needed to use your cell phone to do the update. That seems more of like a novelty thing to me. I personally would rather be doing it on, you know, a stable internet connection where everything is in a controlled environment and that kind of stuff. So you, you can avoid bricking because I can't imagine being on location using your cell phone to update your camera it failing and now you don't have a working camera. That's just my two cents. I'm not saying that that's ever happened. It's just, that seems like a, um, an unnecessary risk, I guess would be a good way of putting that. But you do have that ability now inside of the features. So in general, that kind of wraps up all of the, like the big ticket items for the firmware 3.0 update that just rolled out. Uh, I am a fan. I do think that, you know, getting DCI 4K, getting focus breathing compensation and getting 24P is a pretty big deal. Like it's a pretty nice change. I do think that it's a little late and what I mean by that is there's been three or four cameras that have come out that have had some of these features already. You know, you have the a7 IV, which we have, which is cheaper than this camera, and it has focus breathing compensation. It has focus mapping. I personally don't use focus mapping, but it's still a cool feature. And it's one of those things to where the more expensive flagship cameras like the A1 doesn't have any of this stuff. And if I was an A1 owner at this stage, I'd be a little angry because you have cameras like the FX30 or I think was that new EV1 or something that just came out that has a lot of interesting features that none of the higher end cameras do. So that's just kind of, I don't know how I feel about that. It seems like while this is good, it also seems very late. And there's still some things that I'd like to see that Sony has it pushed out to the cinema cameras, like shutter angle, for example, uh, which seems to be a pretty easy fix. You know, I can understand not having built in indie filters because that's probably some more components that you would need that the FX3 just doesn't have. It'd be a cool feature. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, shutter angle seems like it's just software that there wouldn't be anything really groundbreaking that needed to happen in order to have shutter angle. But it, it is nice to see Sony making some strides and bringing this stuff to the FX3. I stuttered right there because I was about to say the A7S3 because that camera doesn't have it. Now, mind you, that is a hybrid, you know, photo camera. It is video centric, but um, I do think that you, by and large, the FX3 and the A7S3, I think everybody knows they're ultra similar and to not have these features kind of migrate over there is kind of strange too. However, um, this is a film video centric camera. So I am glad that they are making these strides. I am glad that it seems like that they are listening to people that are complaining about it. And I look forward to see what is coming out next when it comes to FX3 uh, software updates. So hopefully we get some shutter angle. That'd be cool. With all that being said, like I said, originally, uh, you can download our presets and just upload everything that we talked about during this video. So our mode one is DCI 4K 
24 at 48. Uh, our mode two was DCI 59.98 at 125. And our mode three drops back down to just traditional 4K uh, at 119 with a shutter speed of 250. So this is kind of our three modes. I did change the dial on the back right above the focus magnifier. I changed that to white balance. So you can just use your thumb and scroll up or down and raise your Kelvin or lower your Kelvin. I made some like minor changes inside there. And then we also in the function menu, we have the focus breathing set to where you can turn it on or off if you swipe up on the screen and get to the focus or get to the yeah, the function menu. That's what I meant to say. Get to the function menu. You can swipe up and then just turn that on. So I kind of built our FX3 to be used without going into the menus. That's one reason why I like our little setup. The uh, custom button one, the iris button right here, because we shoot in Cine EI, that simply takes us from 800 to 12,800. So there's no reason to open anything. You can just press, you know, custom button one and it'll go to 12,800 and it'll go back down to 800. And then we, like I said, we have our mode set. Um, other than that, you know, we keep everything kind of the same because it already has zebras display peaking. So we left those kind of the same. And then that back dial we have set to our Kelvin. So that way, you know, our aperture is done by the front ring up here. You know, obviously the ISO can only be 800 or 12,800 and that's controlled by custom button one. So there's no real reason to need to go into a menu and do anything because we, when we're filming weddings, we want to be fast. So that's kind of how we have our stuff set up and you can download those presets and just install it exactly how we have it. We do have a course. Yay. Who doesn't, uh, our course is going to be coming out here in the next few weeks. If you are interested and you want two free lessons, there's a lessons, on, there's a lesson on how to create an awesome blog. There's a lesson on basic business structures. Uh, you can get those, get access for free. That link will be down below too. If you do want both, the download and the course lessons just get the download and reply to the download of the presets and just say that you want access to the lessons and i can just grant it through the email that you you submitted when you got the the presets so it's super simple there's no reason to sign up for both with all that being said if you enjoyed this please like and subscribe to our youtube channel and as always if you have any questions feel free to reach out all right, 